The People Remember, written by New York Times bestselling author E.B. Zaboy, illustrated by Love is Wise. The People Remember when it first happened. It was on a day and on a night, during a rainy season and a dry season, while celebrating a wedding and embracing a new baby, while sending a loved one into the arms of the ancestors and while welcoming a stranger into the warmth of the village. The People Remember that it first happened during a time of war. The Ashanti and the Fulani, the Empire of Mali, the Hausa and the Igbo, as well as the Congo, the Yoruba and Dakan, the Empire of Songhai, the Kingdom of Dahomey, the Mende and the Fawn are where the people used to call home. While telling stories under the star-speckled sky about memories of the ancestors watching from way up high, the people remember that it was an uncle and a father, a daughter and a cousin, an entire family and a whole village that vanished under that great big African sun. The chiefs and the kings, the betrayers and traitors for gold, copper, and iron sold the people in this time of war. The people remember the ropes that bound them on wrists and ankles. They walked to the shore for days and nights through tears and shouts. The people remember this was a time of war. The men with the guns, skin like a pale sun, the men with the whips, the men on the ships, watched the people leave their land never to return as their bare feet left footprints in the sand. There in the bellies of rocking boats, they curled their bodies, singing and praying to faraway gods who maybe, just maybe, could help them fly, could help them float. Some stayed, some jumped, thinking that home was somewhere deep beneath the wide ocean, and maybe, just maybe, she was their mother. Mommy Wata, they called her. They landed on the shores of South Carolina and Virginia, Hispaniola and Brazil. Some met their new masters while others escaped toward the hills. In search of freedom, the Hausa and Fulani, Mende and Fawn found a common language, a new word for home, in the land of the free, home of the brave. If only this new God was one who saves the people from the fields of cotton and sugarcane under that great big American sun. The Ashanti and the Fulani, then the Empire of Mali, the Hausa and Igbo, as well as the Congo, the Yoruba and Dakan, the Empire of Songhai, the Kingdom of Dahomey and the Mende and the Fan, the people remember they were now all one. Umoja. Unity. Ah, yes, yeah, see, the people remember when they did not have their own bodies, their own thoughts, their own time, when the days were long and the sun was hot, when the babies were born and taken away from their mothers, when the sons left their families and the fathers were sold away, when the tears turned into rivers and the shouts turned into music, when the North Star was freedom and Harriet Tubman led the way, when Nat Turner demanded that the people rise up, when that other time of war divided North from South, the people fought for land, for freedom, for tomorrow unknown. The people remember that like the rising and setting sun, the winds turning from cool to warm, they can change a time, a today, a tomorrow, but never the past. The people remember that they have the power to change this nation. Kuji Chagulia, self-determination. Then a new day came and the people were free. The chains had been broken and they could now run toward faraway fields, toward skies, toward sun, toward each other, toward lost ones and toward fathers and mothers. From Mississippi to Chicago, Georgia to New York, from Alabama to California, Louisiana to Canada. Mm, the people remember that great migration to new lands, to new borders, where sharecropping hands were now factory machine fingers. The people toiled and labored, working the roads, the houses, the skyscraping towers, reaching for that great big American sun. In the loud, bustling cities and in the small, quiet towns, the uncles and fathers, daughters and cousins gathered around a small table and on a wide porch and a, on a tattered couch and on a vast green lawn to share jokes and stories, tell tales and riddles, to play the dozens and jump the broom, cakewalk and jive, ring, shout and lindy hop, Charleston and Jitterbug their sorrows away. Like waves crashing ashore and raindrops forming a pool, the people held hands and raised their voices in song. In churches and mosques and temples and healing places, the people laid their troubles down. Like a woven and embroidered rug, a tapestry of memories and sorrow, and a prayer for unknown tomorrows, the people remember that they have a job, they have a duty. Ujima, 
collective work and responsibility. The people remember that freedom had a price. With 40 acres and a mule, a bale of cotton and a bushel of rice, with a silver dollar and a nugget of gold, and all the fruits and vegetables a wooden cart could hold, the people gathered their wealth like raindrops in a storm cloud and plowed the land to sow a farm, purchased wood to build a store, paved a road to establish a town. From Rosewood, Florida to Greenwood, Oklahoma, from Africatown, Alabama to Freedman's Village, Virginia, the people carved out a slice of this American pie and had themselves a fine dessert. Sojourner Truth told the people, I sell the shadow to support the substance. Marcus Garvey's Black Star Line brought some of the people back to Africa. This long journey home, a sweet, sweet justice. Madam C.J. Walker became a millionaire when she said to the people, love your hair. Garrett A. Morgan and George Washington Carver invented all the new and different ways the sun could shine, bright or dim, hot or cool, like a bountiful farm with finely tilled soil and a well-oiled city with all its traffic lights turned green. The people's wealth grew and grew and it rained freedom. Ujima, Cooperative Economics. But the people remember that it happened again and again. It was on a day and on a night, during winter, spring, summer, and fall, while celebrating a wedding and embracing a new baby, while sending a loved one to distant shores, fighting that other great big war, and while guarding a home from the unwelcoming presence of white-hooded strangers. The people remember that it happened again and again. From Birmingham to Little Rock, Selma to Memphis, the people grew weary of the low-hanging strange fruit, lynched fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, cut from those mighty tree branches that were like the arms of ancestors, like the ships, like the ocean, like the land itself, holding, bearing, and protecting. The people remember all those strange, bittersweet fruit whose seeds were buried deep beneath the earth to sprout, to bloom, and to return home soon. There on the streets with picket signs, arm in arm, the people marched to lift every voice and sang the songs of a low swinging sweet chariot. Dr. King gathered the people on that great big lawn near that mighty white house and shouted his dream out to the sun where it could be heard even from the depths of the great wide sea. Change filled the air when the people stood one behind the other on lines as long as history to cast their vote, this precious note placed on ballots. There on the sidewalks of Harlem, the Mecca of Hope, Malcolm X stood atop his great wooden soapbox and told the people to remember, by any means necessary, lest they grow more and more weary. And the brothers and sisters with afros as round as the moon and dashikis colorful like rainbows shouted out loud, I'm black and I'm proud. With raised fists to demand justice, the people remember that they have a purpose. Nia. Even as Jim Crow's dogs waged war on the people's bodies and fire hoses threatened to wipe them out, the people rose up again and again in every city as Martha and the Vandellas sang dancing in the street. There was a new sound in town, a drum beat rhythm, a bass guitar, a saxophone, and a trombone pumping music, sweet music out of Detroit, Michigan. Motown told the people to get down, get down. A little boy named Michael danced and sang his way into the people's hearts as he and his four brothers moved like robots, like dancing machines. Aretha the Soul Queen demanded R-E-S-P-E-C-T and told the people to rock steady as they steady rocked to Jimi Hendrix electric guitar and out of the sky fell the stars. A constellation made of Smokey and Stevie, Diana and Nina, whose Negro spirituals became gospel, became rhythm, became blues. As the mothers and fathers sent their sons to yet another war, the people remember peace and daisies rain from way up high as rainbows arched across the sky. Marvin Gaye asked what's going on and the people replied by painting this world with blues deeper than the ocean as they swayed to a new rhythm, a funk, a disco, a hip hop, born out of jazz, born out of gumbo dance, born out of djembe drums. There was a new beat on the streets, so Amiri, Baraka, Sonia Sanchez, Lucille Clifton, Nikki Giovanni, and Maya Angelou put pen to paper and made their words dance. Here was another chance at freedom, at justice, as the people remember that still, like dust, they rise. 
The poets and storytellers wove together the pieces of fabric handed down to them by Langston, Zora, Richard, and Ralph to make themselves a new patchwork quilt. James, Tony, Alice, and Octavia stitched new stories so the people could remember to go tell it on the mountain that a girl named Pecola wanted blue eyes, a woman named Celie loved the color purple, and that Dana could travel back in time. But out of the rubble of grays and browns was a bass so loud, a groove so smooth, that the people had to get down to the ground on gray concrete on brown cardboard as the disc jockey scratched the vinyl record, turning the beat upside down and downside up, sideways, backward and forward. The people rapped the words as they took apart the beat to dance along the jagged breaks. The Bronx was a place to be as the walls and subway trains became canvases for masterpieces. The people remember that the beat is from the heart, and out of the heart comes the finest art, Koumba, creativity. The people's music and dance, art and stories, fashion and poetry crossed boundaries and borders, mountains and oceans, valleys and hills, shanty towns and villages. From Tokyo to Johannesburg, Paris to Rio, London to Moscow, the people inspired the world. A new president, Barack Obama, claimed a seat, the most powerful in all the land. He demanded change and took a stand. With Michelle, Sasha, and Malia by his side, they were their ancestors' dreams, the people's pride. <sighs> but the people remember that it happens again and again. A boy and his toy, a teenager on the phone, friends coming home from a party, a girl asking for the right way, their breath and their light taken in just one shot. But the people still remember that with each rising sun is a new day. With each new year is a new dream, a new seed of hope unearthed, dusted, and polished. The people know that there will be a time of peace. The people will gather the pieces of fabric, cut, torn, shredded, and made unrecognizable by the storms of time. To sew together a tapestry of their stories, one fine quilt, a blanket for the children to keep them warm, protected, and safe. For the children, the to keep them warm, protected, and safe. Have faith. The people remember Imani. to always have faith. Imani. And now a quick note from the author. She writes. The People Remember tells the journey of African descendants in America. It begins in Africa, where families were torn apart during the transatlantic slave trade. I call this a time of war. People from different parts of West Africa were taken from their homes and families. They belonged to villages and communities, and some from entire nations, such as the Yoruba people and the Ashanti people. These Africans spoke different languages and had different customs, yet they were bound and chained and forced onto ships sailing to the New World, where they formed bonds that enabled them to work together and fight for their freedom. All these people from different African nations had to learn one common language and create a culture that combined their memories of home in Africa with new traditions that allowed them to survive and thrive. The People Remember is about survival as well as the many moments of joy, celebration, and innovation. Goodbye! We did it! We read another book. Congratulations! Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe for more stories. I can't wait to read with you.